This is episode 279 of the Super League Pod. We'll try to avoid any other contrary conduct as we bring you the latest stats, fan reviews and disciplinary action from round 12 of Super League. Birthdays, reach arounds and police photo fits feature as we have news, Super League, Cup and NRL action to recap from the busy last week in Rugby League. So, sanitise your balls and strap yourselves in. It's SLP time. Hello listeners, welcome along to episode 279 of the Super League pod. This week you have myself, Mark, and I'm joined this week by Tim. Hello, Tim. Hiya, how you doing? Yeah, I'm I'm happy that you're on this week and not last week, really, so um, so it's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Can't can't think why that could be. So, yeah. Um, Is, Is it to discuss the news of Ryan Shaw signing for Lee? (laughs) <laughs> I mean that's the main reason we've got you on this week um, of, of course but we can talk about the Pipsanger Panthers training session as well which is a, a, a cool update to give people on kind of the community game getting back to going and people might have familiar experiences themselves of of what you went on with, with your kids down in London at the weekend but before you do that do you want to tell us about the episode sponsor yep so this episode is sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop where you can find a wide range of toys, gifts, rugby league birthday cards and more over at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. If you visit stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop and on any orders over £5, you can earn 5% cash back and also 1% of your order value will go into the SLP coffers by putting SLP discount, that's SLP discount, at the checkout. That's great. Yeah, so what we've got coming up on the show, I mean, there's some news to get to. We're probably going to try and put the emphasis on the match action this week though with six games to go through with the help of all of your listener fan match reviews so that's that's good we um we won't be talking about the change in the league table and the salary cap rules because we we did a go back and listen to slp short 47 that we did during the week to get our full take on that which will include uh, on the league table and the salary cap rule changes that'll include poll resu- results and fan views so we, we we thought with six games to go through on this week's show we didn't want to also have a massive talking point to go for on this week's show so you'll get all of our views uh, and, a, and a lot of quite a few listener views actually on that slp short um but I yeah listened we just... to that, i listened to that yesterday while exchanging a toaster and it was a fairly good um worth worthwhile half an hour so do go and have a listen if you haven't already. Exchanging a toaster, was this, you were the boring taking it back to a shop or was it just some sort of random interaction where you, like, exchanged a toaster for some goods and services other than a toaster? No, it was the boring... Oh. It, it was a, it's a giant toaster that my parents got us for Christmas that's got two toasty things at once, so you can do two things at the same time and it's it's got lots of bells and whistles and so it's the most complicated toaster I've ever owned but it, it blew up midway through lockdown and um, one of the elements so one half worked but the other half hadn't worked so uh, we eventually my dad found the receipt and so I uh, went back to John Lewis yesterday and had a fun fun time with that I think so, it was I think it was a boring time Tim but at least you got to listen to, to, to our show whilst you were doing it which is good which had your views in it on, on it as well so um, there you go Got to listen to me and Alan talking about you for a bit. Weird. Exactly. Yeah. It's all. It's all, yeah. It's all a bit fourth, fifth, third, whatever wall it is that I've broken. <laughs> but exciting stuff. Um, at the weekend was the first Pitts Hanger Panthers training session for, well, since this year, really. Um. Yeah. Well, we had. Yeah, we had a few few training sessions before the lockdown, and then we had the one competition, and then. That was it. So I think we'd had we had five sessions before, um, and that's it. But yeah, it was really good. We got got back on Saturday morning down at Ealing Trail Finders. Um, thanks to London Broncos, they were able to sort the venue out for us, which has been really helpful. And we had ten kids come down, some very appreciative parents. Um, there's a few steps we had to put in place to get that on, so we only really got confirmation this time last week that we could do it. Um, through various things that had to be in place so we had to, yeah had to go through that then had to go through some 
risk assessments, emails to parents, coaches, uh, various things saying what we were doing, why we were doing it, what things had to look like. Um, but it was all quite seamless, really. We had to, to give the balls a good clean uh, before and after, which you should always do in, in, in any circumstance. It's probably quite a good uh, thing for, for life, always clean your balls before and after any heavy usage. And um, we had to adapt the session a bit, just making sure that we limited contact and things like that. And actually, for that the session we were doing, it wasn't too much of an issue because we weren't doing really co- we weren't doing contact anyway. We were just doing tag because um, it was a skill and more of a skill session. So what so what um, different things did you have to did you find that you had to put in place? Because this is something that you know I find quite interesting. We've had Sarah talk a little bit about. Um, might and warriors and, and bits they've had to do differently with parents staying in the cars and kids in the smaller groups and that sort of stuff but you had to do some kind of had to change kind of the equipment and st- stuff that people brought for themselves rather than shared yeah. and stuff like that yeah so so all players were asked to bring out a water bottle with their name on it and um some hand sanitizer and but basically we spaced their jackets and whatever out round the the edge of the field we had plenty of space so we we're able to use the space and they were just sort of spaced out and rather than everybody sort of coming in to gather in at a break you were sort of sent dispersed out and we kind of just shouted and got got over it that way for drop off it had to be quite careful um that this sort of one way in and one way out uh we had to obviously follow yeah the, cl- the cleaning routine making sure that we had everything and we also had a temperature gun as well and to just take temperatures on on the way in. And check the kids everything. found that exciting. If, if, if yeah, well, some some of them um, are used to it at school. So some schools do it, some schools don't. Depends on on the school. And um, so they were, you yeah, know, they, they were fairly comfortable with that. And um, then just got on on with the session really. And yeah, we had to sort of have a risk assessment based on the coaching as well. So make sure that what we were doing was was suitable. The RFL have got different stages in their plan, which has been quite well communicated what you can do at what level and uh, we were thrown into a little bit of doubt with the government announcement that we might not be able to come back with the rule of six rule but it was confirmed that if it's a sport that's got a um, signed off plan from DCMS then you're allowed to carry on so that was really good news that we might not be able to do much but you can still can still have training and the hope is that we'll get a sign off for games from October but at the moment we're, we've got three three more training sessions and then we'll see what we can do from there good stuff well yeah, it's good that the kids were able to get back in the park get some of their energy um out there as well and uh and like you say the parents will have been happy to um ha- have that opportunity for the kids so that's great stuff um well done to london broncos like you say for, for helping the the panthers get that sorted as well all right we're gonna now move on to news from around the world of rugby league um basically every news story that's happened in the last week that isn't the change in the lead to the salary cap rules so we'll get on to that now so on to the news and Super League side Wakefield Trinity have signed the London Broncos sandwich smasher himself Eddie Batty on loan until the end of the season the 29-year-old featured regularly for the Broncos when the Championship Club were in the top flight in 2019. Good bit of business securing a solid prop there for Wakefield. Yeah, he proved himself last year, didn't he, that he can play at this level. So um, good luck to him with a chance to prove himself again. Yeah, and he probably would have kept himself fit doing the buffalo farming over, over lockdown as well. So he's probably in pretty good nick, I imagine. Yeah. Hull Kingston Rovers assistant coach Willie Poaching is to leave at the end of the season to rejoin his former club Wakefield Trinity. The New Zealand-born former second row forward 47 will become an assistant coach to Chris Chester from the 1st of November. Poaching, who began two seasons with Trinity as a player in 1999, previously worked with Chester at Hull KR. I mean, he is fondly remembered by Trinity fans from that period when the, they were just getting back into Super League, really. Um and finding the feet again at the top level so I think the Trinity fans are happy with with someone coming back to the club that they remember fondly what about yeah, have, your thoughts uh, from the whole KL uh, point of view well I think yeah Wakefield are definitely happy that they've poached Willie hmm. um, I mean, yeah there's been questions around his, around what he what he brings and his defensive 
capability because defence hasn't been great at all times. But I think, yeah, it's be interesting to see who Tony Smith brings in. It gives him the chance to bring someone in who suits his philosophy and possibly with an eye on succession as well. Someone perhaps that younger who he can then train up as to take over at some point. So it'll be interesting to see that. Yeah, I mean, he has obviously he's got history of working with Chester and he's got history at, at Trinity, but he's also got history of working with Tony Smith. So you know, before this spell of the last twelve months, he he, he played for Smith at Leeds, didn't he? Um, and I think he might have worked with him at, at Warrington. So uh, he has got it, yeah. But do you think it's do you think it's a, a a major loss or do you not really dwell too much on things like assistant coaches when you yeah head I don't experience himself. I don't, yeah, knowing Tony Smith, I don't think Tony Smith is the sort of coach that has a, lets a lot of input from his assistant coaches necessarily in terms of actually the day to day side of things. I think they, they kind of run what they, what he tells them to, but I don't think they impact much on the philosophy and the, and the actual, and, and the spirit of thing and the, the operations of things. I think he, from my impression anyway, is that he is the one who, sets the agenda and they follow it and maybe Willie Poaching wants to have more of an an input there but I don't know yeah that's maybe just, so maybe so yeah, I know yeah he's got some ideas on the defensive side so I don't know if he if Chris Chester will allow him a bit more room or just he felt happier in, in that way of operating you know who knows? yeah and Trina losing um, Lee Gilmore aren't they so they needed to replace him and Poaching seems like a sensible replacement uh you know, a, a player who played a lot in the back row was good in defence and attack. Solid yeah. guy. <laughs> so, speaking of pretty solid guys, Samoan centre Carlos Tumavave has signed a new four year deal with Super League side Hull FC. The 28 year old has scored 37 tries and 111 appearances for the Early Birds since moving from the Newcastle Knights in the NRL in 2016. Tim Vavo is part of the 2016-2017 Challenge Cup winning sides and has scored five tries in nine games during the 2020 season. So a solid bit of business locking him down. Someone who didn't, you know, was a bit in and out and a bit mm, to start with, but seems to have really come come good the last 18 months or so. Yeah, there was a bit of trying to find his best position. When they first signed him, I think they saw him as probably... The, the kind of flary half to go alongside the steady Mark Snide, but they obviously have, have revisited that, um, and and he's been he's been brilliant since he's had a consistent run in one position. He's probably been the most consistent Hull FC player in the last twelve months, alongside maybe Scott Taylor. Um, you know, it, it, he's been consistently impressive. So it may it's no surprise that they want to lock him down I, I, I don't think 28 four year deal I'm not you know I suppose there's a risk you're taking there but he's been so good and so consistent recently that he deserved rewarding yeah I mean if he's in good nick he's, he's still physically fairly fairly there then you've got to think that that's probably you know for him that's probably his last last big contract oh definitely so it's probably yeah from from his side it, it makes sense to to get that locked in and because I think as yeah 30 31 he's 32 he's not gonna necessarily command the same money that he would be at this point so I think it's a good good deal from his point of view and I think from the club it gives them that stability it's that position they don't have to to look at for a while if as long as he you know carries on the form that he has shown yes definitely um someone who isn't going to get a chance to show what form he can produce in the centres in Rugby League is former England Rugby Union centre Luther Burrell who's looking for a switch back to Rugby Union after his contract with Warrington was terminated by the Super League Club by mutual consent this week the 32 year old joined Wire on a two and a half year deal in July 2019 after leaving Northampton Saints but only played three games last season and was on the bench for the first five of this campaign he hasn't had any game time since resumption and that seems to have been the crunch factor in, in this in the at the end of the day yeah, I mean he's yeah he's slipped down the, the pecking order and the depth charts and then you know they've, they've started to bring people in now as well in terms of young players. So realistically, was someone who was 32 going to get in 
and be and be consistent for that long.